the headlines, federal government insists on electricity tariff hike as labor threatens shutdown. Telcos fear shutdown as construction of Lagos Calabar Highway threatens cables. Inflation biting hard as Bauchi residents lament hike in petrol prices. And on a foreign scene, military rule Chad votes for president in bloody transition. Welcome to News Update. I am Lilian Ogazi. And now to the news in detail. The federal government on Sunday faltered the organized labor's opposition to the electricity tariff hike and the removal of subsidy in the sector. The spokesperson for the Ministry of Power, Florence A.K., who disclosed this in an interview, said the Minister of Power, Adebayo Adelabu's justification of the electricity tariff hike at the Senate's public hearing on Monday last week was still valid. According to her, the burden of electricity subsidy was too much for the government to bear and it was not sustainable. AK stated that against the background of the two-week ultimatum issued by the organized labor demanding the reversal of the increase in the tariff hike. Meanwhile, barely 48 hours after MultiChoice alerted subscribers to a three-day technical downtime, telecommunication companies have expressed concern over the possible connectivity disruption as construction advances on the 700 kilometers Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. While the DSTV and GoTV owner acknowledged the anticipated impact of the ongoing Lagos Calabar construction project on their uplink facilities, tech holes on Sunday expressed bordered concern emphasizing the vital role of telecommunication service and the effect of possible anticipated technical disruption. The Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway Corridor serves as a crucial landing point for multiple submarine cables connecting Nigeria to Europe. The Apex Igbo Social Cultural Group Ohanezim Igbo has demanded an immediate apology to the Ukachuku brothers and the subsequent compensation by the federal government over what it called the demolition of their real estate investment at Asokoro Extension on the orders of the Minister of the FCT, Yeson Wike. Officials of the Federal Capital Development Agency had, on the 27th March 2024, invaded the, detach the project site with the detachment of over 300 security personnel including the army, the navy, the police and many others, and demolish the properties. Speaking with journalists in Abuja, the President General Ohane Zindibu Worldwide, Chief Engineer Emmanuel Iwanyawu, who was represented, also called on President Bola Tinibu to intervene on the matter as a panacea for peace, equity and justice. Other past FCT ministers were not ignorant of the law governing FCT land acquisition. Therefore, it is instructive also to note that the Okachuku brothers are law-abiding citizens with national honors who acquired their wealth through dint of hard work and the unwavering commitment for excellence. And they have contributed immensely to peace, development, and overall well-being of the federal capital territory. Now moving to Lagos State, where the Lagos State government has announced its plan to remove over 100 shanties housing several people at Adeniji Adili on that bridge from Monday. The Lagos State Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, Tokumbo Wahab, disclosed this while briefing journalists on Sunday. He said the removal comes after the expiration of a 48-hour removal notice served on all occupants of the shanties to move out their belongings. The commissioner said operators of the kick against indiscipline and officials from the ministries, monitoring enforcement and compliance department will be given security backup to conduct the operation. Wahab emphasized that the exercise is part of Babaji Olushola Sangwolu's administration's commitment to reclaim all ungoverned spaces that dot the Lagos landscape. The Tomato Crates Dealer Association of Nigeria and the Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria have threatened to cut tomato supply to Lagos State 
over alleged destruction and burning of their commodities. The National Chairman Tomato Credit Dealer Association, Ahmed Al Rama, who disclosed this as a press briefing in Zaria, said the incident that occurred at Agige Local Government of Lagos State has destroyed over 60,000 empty tomato crates. Arama, who is also the National Secretary of Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria, explained that raffia basket was initially used for conveying tomatoes to the south, adding that, however, raffia basket caused more damage to the tomatoes. He added that the plastic crates were introduced to mitigate damage and wastage while conveying fresh tomatoes from north to the southern parts of Nigeria. Now, according to him, each empty crate cost 6,000 naira, noting that members lost over 360 million naira investment to the clash. The association appealed to the fed federal and legal state government, as well as other relevant stakeholders, to look into the issue and compensate the association to caution the effect of the damage. If government didn't intervene into, we are going to call a uh, we are going to call a strike. We are going to call legal states. If nothing has been done, maybe we will stop sending the tomatoes into that. State in China because of this loss that you have encountered. Yes, sir, if you see, I am the General Secretary of Amalgamated Union of Food Stock and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria. Therefore, I we are going to call a meeting of Amalgamated Union of Food Stock and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria because of this issue. We call up, we are going to sit down on Monday in Abuja. If nothing has been done, we are going to. Everybody are going to stop supplying tomatoes. At only, night. only tomatoes. Only tomatoes because it happens to tomatoes. Meanwhile, a fire outbreak has destroyed some sections of the Mundumbawa country home of Kanu State's former governor Ibrahim Shakaro, destroying valuables worth millions of naira. It was gathered that a fire was suspected to have emanated from the kitchen, spreading into another part of the building. The incident occurred Sunday evening as it took the effort off the operators of the state fire service who brought the fire under control. Confirmation, confirming the incident, rather, the public relations officer of the state fire service, Command Samini Yusuf Abdullahi, said the incident has destroyed many parts of the house. He said two rooms, two kitchens, two sitting rooms, two stories, a sitting room, central sitting room, a corridor and toilets have all been destroyed by the fire. Bauchi State residents expressed dissatisfaction with the Nigerian government's lack of responsiveness in addressing the challenges faced by the ordinary citizens. They cite scarce resources and a high cost of premium motor spirits, which has exacerbated various issues within the community. These sentiments reflect broader concerns about the nation's current state, particularly in light of recent price hike in petroleum products by independent marketers. Trust TV's Adamu Imam reports. Residents of Bochi interviewed by Trust TV describe premium motor spirit as indispensable to many Nigerians. Ahmed Ibrahim and Muhammad Aliu, both family men with five and seven children respectively, employee in the state capital laments their inability to afford the upkeep of their motorcycles due to the recent price hike. Because what I earn is not sufficient to buy fuel and feed my family simultaneously, I have opted to leave the motorcycle at home and walk several kilometers to work. Even if I have some extra money due to the fuel scarcity, I will endure the journey on food to ensure we can afford food. We should be able to purchase fuel despite the price hike, but it's becoming increasingly difficult with our limited funds leading to struggles at the filling stations. If our government were responsible, they would address this situation. We feel cornered now. They should take the necessary action. A motorcycle mechanic and a household representative share their perspective on the enduring challenges stemming from both official filling station and black market sales of PMS. They emphasize that despite the price hikes, Nigerians continue to feel the impact of scarcity. I managed to buy fuel half a liter from the black market at 700 naira, but fuel is not readily available. 
Only a few stations have it with queues up to 300 customers waiting to purchase. I can't wait any longer with what little I have. I must do something to provide food for my family. May God help us. Our leaders need to act swiftly. Due to this fuel crisis, prices have skyrocketed in the market. Everything including basic commodities is now three times more expensive. The price of PMS varies across filling stations with one liter now cost 1,500 naira. We need the government to address this issue urgently because the Nigerian people are unhappy. Residents also lament the behavior of independent petroleum marketers accusing some filling stations of holding the commodity to the detriment of the masses. They express frustration over the government's perceived inability to address the issue effectively. Adam Imam Trust TV News, Bauchi. Now moving on, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NEMET, has predicted sunshine and haziness from Monday to Wednesday across the country. NEMET's weather outlook released on Sunday in Abuja forecast sunny and hazy conditions on Monday over parts of Yobe, Jigawa, Kano, and Katsina State. Throughout forecast period with chances in morning. Thunderstorms over parts of Taraba State. The agency envisaged cloudy skies with intervals of sunshine over inland states of the south and the coast. Nimet predicted localized thunderstorms over parts of Imo, Abia, Ondo, Oshun, Ekiti, Oyo, Rivers, Edo, Cross River, Aquaibom, Lagos, Bayasa, Rivers, and Delta states later in the day. This is news updates coming to you from Trust TV. Coming up. Just community accuses state government of demolition without prior notice. More news when we return this day. Hey, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is news updates on Trust TV. Let's take a quick look at our headlines again. Federal government insists on electricity tariff hike as labor threatens shutdown. Telcos fear shutdown as construction of Lagos Calabar Highway threatens cables. Now moving on, Vice President Kashin Shetima on Sunday evening departed Abuja for Dallas, the United States of America, to represent President Bola Tinubu at the 2024 U.S.-Africa Business Summit. The summit is being hosted by the Corporate Council on Africa. The Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Media and Communications, Stanley Wokocha, revealed this in a statement he signed on Sunday. Besides the summit, Plenary, the Shetima is expected to speak at the roundtable on Africa infrastructure investment with a focus on impact and returns. He's also scheduled to speak on a high level panel on agribusiness, focusing on transitioning from food insecurity to thriving agribusiness. Residents of British American Junction in Joss North local government area of Plateau State are accusing the Plateau State government of demolishing their houses without any justifiable reason or prior notice. Now, according to the community, the action has caused them to suffer avoidable losses to the tune of several millions of naira, while some have lost their source of livelihoods. Ado Musa completes the report. According to the affected resident of the community, the demolition was a deliberate attempt to force them out of the area. They explained that the plot of the land on which they were building were duly purchased from a former chairman of Lantan North local government area, Mr. Alfred Gono, adding that they were provided with all the necessary documentation after acquiring the land. <laughs> they emphasized that both the Just Metropolitan Development Board, JMDB, and the State Ministry of Land and Survey had acknowledged the purchase of the plots, pointing out that it was the same Ministry of Lands and Survey that issued the site plan before they began building in the area. JNDB, since we since you go and no going, by Taradia, Munza on other Sukosin, Mimuba. Officials of the Just Metropolitan Development Board, JMDB, just arrived in the area without giving us any prior notice. The board did not inquire how and when we got the plot of the land. They just started demolishing our houses. If they are claiming we are building on the waterways, then I urge you to go and see it yourself. What about houses that were built 
far from the waterway. They were also demolished. Me kara yuwa ba me tapa ganim masipa irunga na bamba. One no guri anzo anse mane. I've never seen this kind of. Mo one day se mane guri njenu. The person that sold this land to us is alive. It was legally acquired. We have all our papers, which we are certified by the Just Metropolitan Development Board, Ministry of Land and Survey, and even traditional rulers of the community as far back as 2021. What is our offence? We don't even understand why the houses were demolished. Ana abu de paru iptila ine part amana sede muche ina lahiwe ina lahiwe. The Just Metropolitan Development Board has not done well to demolish our houses. Any demolition is always carried out with following an order of a court of competent jurisdiction and a notice to that effect. The day they came was the same day they demolished the houses. Go and see the distance between the waterway and the building. What have we done to deserve this? Responding to the allegations, the general manager, Just Metropolitan Development Board, had Bankat said the buildings were erected on the waterway. Building is being done is simply to be able to inspect, direct, and guide you on whether it is supposed to be existent there or not. And we always emphasize that they are condemnable and non condemnable buildings. And you know, when people remain recalcitrant, the major thing they want to do is to go ahead and their government. Now, today we have come not just to make a statement, we are not doing this as a show off. We are telling anybody who is building on waterways, even before the executive order number three came out, the governor was magnanimous enough to have given them three months grace for everybody to regularize his paper so that for those who are condemnable they pay and get their approvals for those that are not condemnable they have to start taking them off but i think this is going to be a strong message to them to know that we're not joking about it so anybody who does not have an approval and feels he wants to dare government he can go ahead it will be recalled that the state government has recently signed executive order number 003 of 2024 for the control of building and vehicular traffic in the state adomusa trust tv news just Away from that, the National Examination Council NECO has digitalized the recruitment process for both internal and external examination supervisors and assistant supervisors for the basic education certificate examination and the senior school certificate examination. Now, according to the council, digitization is to check sharp practices in the recruitment process and to enhance efficiency and effective service delivery. A statement made in MENA by the Acting Director of Information and Digital Communication, Aziz Zani, added that the process which involved migration from the manual recruitment of supervisors and assistant supervisors to the online system would ensure that supervisors' nomination form, appointment letters and e-photo albums are generated online. Also, routine swapping of supervisors and assistant supervisors during the examination would be done online. Interested qualified teachers with Nigeria certificates in education degree, certificate master's degrees, PhD and professors are eligible to apply as supervisors and assistant supervisors. Now to the foreign in the United Kingdom says only international students coming for their doctor of philosophy studies, that's PhD, are eligible to bring independence to the country. The British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Richard Montgomery, made this known in an interview in Abuja. He said the educational system policy changed earlier this year for international students in higher education not to bring dependents into the UK was to curb the increase of foreign students bringing independence. He explained that a huge surge in dependency was putting on an unsustainable pressure on many universities. Meanwhile, Chadians have commenced voting for a president in an election purportedly claimed aimed at ending military rule, but dismissed by opponents of junta leader Mahamat Idris. Derby, as a fix following violent repression, Voters will choose whether to extend decades of Derby family rule in one of the world's poorest country, a crucial territory in the fight against Judaism, Judaism across the Sahel region. They have the change to opt instead for Derby's own Prime Minister's success, Masara, denounces a stooge by critics in the absence of any other serious challenges. At his closing election rally on Friday, Derby promised a knockout in the first round, Masara also vowed to win without a runoff, telling supporters, for the first time, Chad will be yours, Chadians. 
And now the world of sports, sport minister John Owan Eno has congratulated Team Nigeria athletes for their impressive performance so far at the World Relays Championship in the Bahamas. The Nigerian athletes secured qualification for the 4x400 four mixed relays and 4x400 four men's relay event of the 2024 Olympics game in Paris. The Nigerians men 4x400 four quartet of Dubem Wachuku, Dubem Amene, Sekiru Adeyemi and Chidi Okeze showcased their powers on the track, clocking a remarkable time of 3 minutes 1 seconds to secure qualification for the Olympic Games. The achievement marks the fastest time by an Nigerian male team single, the bronze winning team of James Godet, Musa Audu, Saul Wiojopa and Enefiok Udobong at the Athens 2004 Olympics. on sport, Audrey Rubel won the Madrid Open with a hard fought 4-6-4-7-5-7-5 victory over Felix Olga Alceme on Sunday to secure his second title of the year, despite battling with illness. The Russian world number eight said he was almost dead every day and could barely sleep this week after securing a career second Masters 1000 victory. Rubelf had lost four consecutive matches before arriving in the Spanish capital, but came from a set down to beat his Canadian opponent. The 26-year-old thrived at the Hong Kong Open in January, but struggled since before turning around his form in Madrid, dropping just one set on the way to what proved a tense final. With that, we've come to the end of news updates on Trust TV. Do want to follow us on all our social media platforms for more news, programs and documentaries. Thanks for watching. I am Lilian Okazi. Bye for now.